we have, as the said, is built on better promises. And so we certainly thank God today that we've been hearing um, for these few days some of those promises. And as I've already stated, these messages have certainly done my heart glad. His first wonderful uh, message that the district elder brought to us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit dealt with the light of God, then the love of God. Amen. And I know I'm going to hear something about God in a few minutes. Can the church say amen? So we certainly thank God for what we've heard, for him uh, being with us. Amen. His lovely mother, praise the Lord, who looks like she, amen, is, hallelujah. I, I don't want to put a number on it, but she looks good, doesn't she? Can the church say amen? And I hope I look that good when I praise the Lord. But we certainly thank God. He's certainly been good to us, and I know he has to get back to his wonderful congregation where he pastors in the city of Flint. Amen, Michigan. Amen. One of the historic churches in this particular council. Amen. I believe it was um, your former pastor or the pastor before that, District Elder Scott. Was it Scott? That was, that, that was your pastor too? District Elder Scott used to grace uh, this particular pulpit. I was making the point uh, that this pulpit uh, actually was the same pulpit that Bishop Brisbane preached from many, many years ago. It's probably about 70 years old or so. So uh, no doubt uh, it was District Elder B.T. Scott that stood behind this particular pulpit as a, a very dear friend of one of our former pastors, Bishop Brisbane, in the church say amen. And it is one sermon that the saints um, talk about. I think, Bishop, you talked about it, uh, a sermon that Bish uh, the District Elder Scott preached. It's in the bag. He preached it here one time. It's in the bag. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, and that was over probably at Rena Street. But we thank God for history. Somebody say history. And longevity um, all comes from preaching the right things. See, if you preach Jesus, people will come. Can the church say amen? We don't have to preach a lot of stuff. Amen. We don't have to mix it. Praise the Lord. The recipe is good the way it was. Can the church say amen? So we thank God for what we have here. And we certainly thank the Lord for this wonderful man of God that has come, come from good stock, good roots. Praise the Lord that has that has come all the way from the great city of Flint. Let us stand uh, for the uh, last time on this occasion. Amen. Uh, he, he's going to have to go back. Also, I won't be here tonight, but this preacher right here is going to be preaching. So please. I have to. I, I, it's, it's ironic that I have to go to Flint tonight to preach for another pastor, uh, his church. So, uh, let us greet this man of God, District Elder Philip Thompson, for the last time on this occasion with a hearty praise the Lord. Bless you, man. Thank you. Please be seated. Amen. So grateful to be here uh, with you on this Sunday morning, as we have been on Friday. And Saturday night, and I was telling uh, Pastor Richardson that we have the same pulpit at our church. It's not in the sanctuary, but we keep it in our chapel. And I asked him, "Does this piece lift up?" And I, I can remember this piece lifting up as a little kid. And and, uh, and so ours looks similar to this. It's uh, kind of worn right here because the preacher's always grabbing right here. And uh, kind of worn right here because the preacher's always uh, kind of rubbing right here. The oils from your hand kind of just get into the wood. And uh, you good slapping pool pit. <laughs> yeah, now... These pulpits we have, you can't really hit them too hard. They'll, they'll break. This stuff right here will have your hand hurting after a while. <laughs> it's good stuff. Amen. But we're grateful to be here again with you. And we thank God for your fine hospitality and for all of the wonderful people here in this congregation. And uh, we want to greet you in sweet Jesus' name. Uh, thank God for one of the young ladies that uh, is from our congregation. Her, her mother lives in Muskegon, and so she 
On her way back home, she stopped by here. Just wave your hand, Sister Lauren. Amen. And thank God for her. Let's get right in the word. Amen. Both uh, myself and your pastor have to uh, get get on the road. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I feel good. Uh, and uh, it's been a long time since I've done a three-day revival. <laughs> long long time <laughs> but uh, it's been good it's been good for me and uh, we certainly have have felt the Lord in this place we're still in first John so let's go to first John chapter number five Amen. will you do me a favor I always do this at home so I'm gonna act like I'm at home Will you turn to somebody and say, it's good to see you in service this morning? Yes. Uh, yeah. Amen. Now, that's the only time I want to have you turn to your neighbor. <laughs> Amen. But it's good to greet one another. Amen. All right. First John chapter number five. <coughs> Oh, man, it's good stuff in here. And we're going to give a, a slight review for those who couldn't be here on Friday and Saturday. We're going to give you a slight review. All right? Uh, look what he says here in verse number 12. He that hath the Son, and he that hath not the Son of God, hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may be on the name. Yes, you may be seated. Amen. So he says to us in point blank terminology, no uncertainty there. So we talked about on Friday, God is light, right? We talked about on Saturday that God is love. That's the essence of his being. And God cannot be anything other than what he is. We can get out of character. We can act out of what we know is best to do. But God cannot do that. As the Bible told us, in him is no darkness at all. James said it like this. He's the father of lights, right, in whom is no variableness, right? In other words, God does not operate in flip mode like we do. You know, you catch us on the wrong day and we're not nice people. Y'all don't want me to preach to you today. <laughs> Catch us in a bad mood and we don't want to talk. You see, God, God don't operate like that. God is consistently consistent. Don't you love him? Amen. Amen. In, in fact, he said it like this. He says in Malachi, I am God and I change not. And because I don't change, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen. If God were to ever change, first thing he'd have to do is wipe us all out. Because huh? ain't nobody been good in life. Amen. I don't care how you want to brag. Ain't nobody been good. Amen. That's why we needed God. That's why we need him right now. Is there anybody that's not ashamed to say, I need him today? Amen. If he don't touch me, amen, I won't be able to get up out my bed. If he don't touch you, you won't be able to bend over and tie your shoe. Amen. Amen. So, so God is, is love. 
and God is life. Amen. He is life. And the Bible tells us right here that he that hath the Son have life. There are a lot of people who are alive. In other words, they have the physical capacity to breathe and to do what living beings do. But they don't have life. See? They're alive, but they don't have life. The life that's being spoken of here is not exhaling and inhaling. This is talking about the eternal life that Jesus gives to those who embrace him and believe on his name. Glory to God. Now, the Bible is clear here that there is only one name that deserves glory and honor. There is only one name that's been supranominated above every name that's on the face of the earth. And we can appreciate some good names that have been in the history, particularly of our country. Roosevelt, Lincoln, King, Kennedy. We can go on naming all of these uh, names that people uh, long after and appreciate, but none of them compare to the name of Jesus. When you say the name Trump, it don't heal nobodies. When you say the name Obama, it don't save no souls. When you say the name Clinton, it don't move a headache out of your head. But when you call on that name Jesus, <laughs> when you say that name in the atmosphere, something gets stirred up. Demons got to flee when you call that name Jesus. Glory to God. That's why I love calling it. Amen. And there's life in the name. Amen. Now, let, let's look back at another scripture that we already read this week. Let's go to St. John. Let's go to St. John. Amen. Because God is life. Amen. And that's why when we come to church, you hear us uh, and you see us. Because... He has given us life. Amen. Uh, Brother Joe was up here uh, directing the choir. You may not have been able to see it, but his feet was. Yeah, his feet was. And he was singing and directing the choir at the same time. Amen, because there's something about the songs of Zion that get a hold to you. They cause you to think. They cause you to meditate and reflect on how good God has been to you. Amen. All right, now, let's look here. Amen. Your pastor told me I could take my time to that. <laughs> All right, amen. John chapter St. John chapter number one, we read this scripture on Friday night in verse number four. It says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. So that illumination, right, was uh, the product of the invigoration, right? You got illumination and you got invigoration. The light illuminates us and causes us to see what we could not see. And then his spirit invigorates us. It takes dead, dull people and puts life down on the inside of us so that we can lift our heads up 
so that we can come in church and raise our hands and open our mouths and express with thankfulness how good God has been because we have life. Amen. Anybody got life today? If you got the sun, you have life. Amen. Will you say, uh, what about that? Tell me about that life, preacher. Amen. Now, we know that, uh, that Jesus is God and that God is Jesus. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4 and 5, I believe it says there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God. He's the father of all. Look at this. He's above all, <laughs> through all, in all. Amen. I'm glad I got that one God on the inside today. And because I have him, I have life. Not just breathing in and out, but I'm talking about eternal life. Amen. Amen. And I believe that if we have eternal life, amen, it does something to us in this physical life, in this temporal life. I don't believe you can have eternal life and it not change you in the temporal life. Amen. When you get eternal life, it renovates your temporal life so that the places that you used to go, you don't go anymore so that those long two dollar words that used to come out your mouth y'all ain't hear what I'm saying don't come out your mouth anymore because you have been renovated from the inside out amen when the Holy Ghost gets in you it immediately begins to go to work on all that is inside you Amen. It goes to wrecking and renovating, changing you around so that you can begin to express on the outside the life of God that's on the inside. Amen. Don't tell me you saved and you ain't living right. Amen. Because holiness always produces a lifestyle. Am I in the right church? Amen. It's not just something you do on Sunday. It's who you are. Amen. It's not what I do. It's who I am. Amen. Because I got the life of God on the inside. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, look at this. Let's, let's go to chapter Acts, chapter number 17. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm working my way up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Acts chapter number 17, because, amen, I'm concerned in the days that we live in that people don't really appreciate the life of God. Amen. And maybe it's because some folk just don't understand it. You can't appreciate what you don't understand. That's, that's why you need the word of God. Amen. And, and I get it, you know, there's sometimes when uh, you know, young people especially, sometimes they feel like we just shove things down their throat, like uh, you just forced it on me. No, but I want to explain it to you so you can understand it, that living for God is not a burden. I want you to hear me today. Living for God is not a burden. Amen. That, that there's a whole lot of things you're going to avoid by serving God. Amen. Serving God is preventative medicine. It'll keep you from a whole lot of junk in this world. And, and, and your friends will try to make you feel bad about what you're not doing. Amen. But you got to feel good about, about what you are doing. Amen. You mean to tell me that it's fun to get drunk and throw up until you can't throw up? That, that don't sound like fun to me. 
And you mean to tell me that it's fun to bed hop and catch a sexually transmitted disease? That don't sound like fun to me. Amen. But I tell you what's, what's a good time when I, when I can be around the saints of God. Amen. When I can come in his house. Amen. When I can know I got the assurance that if Jesus come, I'm going back with him. That, there's nothing more important to me than knowing that when he cracks the sky, I'm going back with him. Anybody glad you're on your way to heaven? Woo! When the trump sound, the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain. See, there are two conditions. The alive deals with your mortal life. That's breathing in and out. Remain deals with your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, you got to remain. You got to remain under the blood. Amen. I, I love that song. We used to sing that song back in the day. The sinner's refuge here alone, under the blood, under the blood. That's where he makes salvation known, under the precious blood. Anybody glad you got the blood of Jesus on your life? Anybody glad you being kept under the blood? Amen. All right. Amen. Acts chapter number 17. Look at it, what it says here now. Ooh, yes. In verse number 28, he says, for in him, let the church say in him, in him, not out of him, but in him. Amen. We live and move and have our being. Thank you, Lord, that I am in you this Sunday morning. I know what it is to be out of you. Amen. I know what it is to be nervous. Amen. About not being saved. I'm so glad. Amen. I can lay down at night. I got peace. Amen. I ain't worried about looking over my shoulder. Uh, ain't nobody looking for me, trying to find me. Amen. Some, some dude ain't trying to track me down because I hadn't been with his wife. Ain't none of that going on. Amen. I got peace in my mind and in my spirit. Amen. That's the wonderful thing about being saved. It comes along with peace. Amen. It comes along with joy. It comes along with happiness when you get saved. That's why I don't believe that you can be saved and be miserable all at the same time. Now, I know some folk now uh, are not very fun to be around. Just listen to me for a minute. Amen. I don't believe that when you get saved that you lose the ability to laugh. I want it to be quiet. I don't believe that when you get saved that you so saved that you can't crack a smile. I don't want to be around nobody like that that can't even smile. You so saved, you can't even smile. Don't, I don't want to be around you. Get me around somebody that can at least say, it's a great day today. Get me around somebody that can walk into work with their head held high and say, it's a beautiful day because I'm saved and I'm sanctified. And you can laugh when you get saved. And then the Bible say, a merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit would dry out your bones. Amen. Now, now I get it. It all depends on what you're laughing at. Amen. But we can have a good time and still be saved. As a matter of fact, if we couldn't have a good time and be saved, I wouldn't want to be over here. Amen. But I'm so glad that he made it possible for me to have a good time when I got saved. As a matter of fact, this is the best time I'd have ever had in my life, knowing Jesus and having eternal life on the inside. This is the best time I've ever had. You ain't going to have no good time in the bar. You ain't going to have no good time in the club, but when you come over here in the sanctuary, you can have a good time. You can let your hair down. You can let loose in the sanctuary and say to God be the glory for the things he has done. So now, so now when you get life, amen, when you get the life of God, you ought to be having a good time 
being alive. Amen. When I go out and I, I, I see my neighbors, I don't give my neighbors a hard time. You know, because they ain't saved, I don't give them a hard time. But what I do is I live in front of them. I smile. I go pick, out my, pick up paper. Amen. I keep my yard nice and neat. I try to be a good neighbor. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Amen. I try to be somebody that they want to be around. And if they invite me over to their house for a barbecue, I'll go over there. Now, see, here's what happened with us sometimes. Is it all right if I come down here? This is what happened with us sometimes when we get saved. We don't want to be around nobody that ain't, that ain't saved. I ain't going to that family reunion. They're going to be drinking. Well, it don't matter if they drinking. It matters if you are drinking. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I, I, I believe, amen, that I ought to be able to walk into an environment that ain't right. And when I get in there, things start getting right. Because I'm bringing the light in with me. As a matter of fact, if there's anything they need, they need to see some God in you. People will start asking you questions when you go around them. Remember, Jesus got accused of being a friend to publicans and sinners. They said, this man eateth with sinners. If Jesus could eat with sinners, you mean we can't eat with sinners? You mean we can't go to lunch with a, with a co-worker that ain't saved? You mean to tell me we can't have a burger with somebody that ain't saved? I thought you said you had power. I thought you said you had the Holy Ghost. It don't matter what's all around me. It matters what's in me. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got power and you got life. Dead stuff all around you, but you got life. How are people going to be helped if you can't be around them? I ain't going over there to that mess. But you said you want to be like Jesus. That's what you said. Didn't you say that? Who said, who, 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 who was saved and ain't ever said that? I want to be like Jesus. Well, Jesus sat down with the people that needed him. He said, they that are whole need not a physician. And it in your Bible. So I'm going to have an attitude that I don't want to go to my family reunion because they're going to be drinking. Let them do whatever they want to do. As soon as they ask me one question about how you doing, uh oh. <laughs> You didn't open up a can of worms because I'm going to let you have it in 3.5 seconds. I'm going to tell you how good God. Anybody, see, we think we can just testify on Sunday night. But when you get to your family reunion, as soon as they ask you how you doing, I'm so very glad you asked. I'm saved. And I'm glad I'm saved. I ain't got no sad story to tell. Either you have the life or you don't. Either you got the power or you don't. Anybody glad you got power this Sunday morning? Now, how many people have walked past a liquor store since you've been saved? Did you go in the liquor store because you walked past it? It didn't matter what was going on there. It matters what was going on here. And I'm so glad when I got saved. I'm so glad when I got the Holy Ghost, he changed my mind about all my activities. Am I talking to some real folk today? All that stuff I used to do, it don't appeal to me no more because I got life on the inside. I lay down all that dead stuff. Let's go to Luke chapter number 24. 
See, I want to help you today. I want to help you to realize that you can go to lunch with an unsaved coworker. And you know what? When they sit down and they just dig right into their food, you say, excuse me. <laughs> See, that little simple act right there tells that unsaved loved one that you're willing to, or that unsaved coworker, that you're willing to acknowledge God. Just by simply saying, excuse me. Something that simple can open up the conversation about why you do what you do. If we're always around saved people, how anybody unsaved gonna get saved? Luke chapter number 24. Amen. Look what it says here. I love this right here. Amen. Ooh, look at this. In verse number five, he says, and they were afraid. This is, this is the story about Christ's resurrection. He says, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, what? See, Jesus had already come out the tomb. They said, this is a dead place where you are. This is where dead people dwell, right where you are. But you're looking for a living man where dead things are. Amen. Ain't you glad that you are no longer looking for living things in dead places? When people go to the bar, when people are hanging out at the club, when people are doing all kinds of crazy stuff, getting involved in pornography, pornography you know what they're doing? They're seeking living things among dead things. But I'm so glad I laid down seeking living things among dead things. I got the life on the inside right now. That's why when I come to church, I ain't got no time to be texting you. I ain't got no time to be looking at you. I'm coming here to give God some praise because he's been good to me. Come on, let's go to 1 Peter. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter. Amen. Amen. We ought to be lively people. Yes. I believe it. I believe it. We ought to be lively people. I believe we ought to be energetic people. Amen. I believe we ought to be the most positive people on the face of the earth. I don't think we ought to be dull and negative. I believe we ought to be positive. Amen. You ought to be finding a silver lining in every situation in your life. Am I talking to some real folk? Instead of talking about, amen, what's so wrong with life and what's so bad. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to be bringing out the word of God. You ought to be telling folk, amen, that God is still in control. You ought to be telling folk that it may be bad right now, but if you just hold on to the midnight hour, amen, you might be crying right now, but if you stay focused, you might be, amen, on your face and on your knees right now, but if you just hold on to the dark hour, does anybody know that God is able to make a way out of nowhere? Is there anybody here that's seen God work? Is there anybody here who has seen God heal bodies? I believe if you just hold on, if you just hang in, the God that we serve, will show you he's got all power in heaven and in earth. First Peter. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Look what it says here. First Peter chapter number two. I believe that's where I want. Yes, Lord. Amen. He says in verse number five, are you there? Ye also your lively stones, amen. Now, when you come to church, amen, when you, when you are in church, you ought to be lively. You ought to be vibrant, amen. Why the long faces today? <laughs> Why the long faces? Did somebody lose your, your dog? Did your, your cat run away? Why the long faces today? <laughs> amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, you, you need to notify your face. 
huh? If you're happy and you know it, notify your face. Amen. In other words, you got to put a smile on your face. At some point, you got to look like, amen, people can approach you. If you always frowning, people feel like they can't even say hi to you. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even say hi to you if you don't smile some. I'm just going to go to, to the people that really are smiling. But if you are happy and you know it, you need to notify your face. And then your hands ought to go up and your mouth ought to open and say, Lord, I just want to thank you because you've been so good. He says we're lively stones. He said we're lively stones, right? Amen. Now, lively is an expression that's outward, right? The only way it can be outward is something had to take place inwardly. I, I wouldn't expect anything from anybody who hasn't had a change inwardly. So if you haven't had a change inwardly, I don't expect nothing from you. But if you have a change inwardly, there ought to be an expression outwardly. Because you are a lively stone. One more scripture. Amen. Maybe two more, and I think I'm about to close. Let's let's stay in second. Let's stay in Peter. Amen. Second Peter. Let's go there. Second Peter. Chapter number one, amen. This is what I love about God. See, see, young people, old people, and everybody in between, God has given you what you need to survive in this life. Yes. Let me tell you what I found out. That, that uh, you know, when I first got saved, amen, I can remember how they were putting the rules in me. Just stay with me. Stay with me. They put the rules in me. They put the rules in me. By rules, I mean the do's and the don'ts. They put those things in me. They hammered those things in me, and I'm grateful that they did. But 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 as I as I serve God a little bit more, Amen. I moved past the rules and I got involved with the relationship. See, because when you get in relationship, the rules just don't even matter, because you love God so much that you ain't interested in letting Him down. You love God so much that you ain't even got no time to be entertaining no foolishness. Am I talking to real people? See, we got to get past the rules and we got to get into relationship. When you love Jesus for who he is, when you love Jesus for who he is, the rules become secondary. It's the relationship that matters the most. It's just like a relationship between a man and a wife. I believe you got a good man up there. And I believe that he's interested in you as a person. The only way he can really love you, he's got to be truly interested in you as a person. Not just as a mother, because you wasn't a mother when he met you. You became a mother as a product of relationship. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. So it's got to be something about her that he loves individually. Same thing with us. We got to love Jesus for relationship. You just got to start seeking. You know, when I'm at home, I don't do all that Jehovah Jireh, Heavenly Father, oh God of mine. I just say, Lord Jesus, I need you. See, I don't pray just on my knees either. I pray when I'm driving my car on the way to work, I'm saying, Lord Jesus, you got to help me today. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I'm praying with my eyes open. I'm praying on my way up to my office. I'm praying when I sit down at my desk. I'm praying when I'm going to get a glass of water. I'm praying, amen, when I go into a meeting because I just want the Lord to help me. I just want to, anybody want to please God? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Is there anybody in this sanctuary that really want to please God? Do you really want him to smile at you? 
I want to be in relationship with him. And see, when you're in relationship with people, it's always evolving. It's always growing. There are some things about my mother that I don't even know. Some things about her that I'm still learning. I'm like, is that right? I didn't know that. No, I'm serious. And I've been her child all my life, 45 years. But you learn people from talking to them. Let me tell you something. Anything you want to die, stop talking to it. Anything you want to die, stop talking to it. Young people, if you're having a hard time getting away from a boy or a hard time getting away from a girl, stop talking to him. He's going to drive quick. Boom. Anything you communicate with, you give life to. Ooh. See, I'm teaching y'all like I'm at home. <laughs> this is how I teach at home. Anything you want to live, you got to talk to it. You want to have a vibrant relationship with Jesus? Talk to him. This is the reason why some of the saints don't really prosper and grow in the way they should. We call for a concert, wall to wall. Call for prayer meeting. You can pick up a rock. Or you can bring a shotgun in here with buck shots, and if sprayed all over the place, it might hit one or two people. And the enemy knows that. That's why he keeps us away from prayer, because that's where your lifeline is. Oh, I'm preaching this Sunday morning. You want to grow in your life? With Jesus, you better get out on your knees. You better talk to him on your way to work. It don't have to be a formal conversation. That's why I told you, I don't say all that Jehovah Jireh stuff. Lord Jesus, I don't say all them titles and all that stuff. I just call him Jesus. You talk to him. I'm going to finish. If you talk to him, young people, if you talk to him, old people, if you talk to him, middle-aged people, you'll see your relationship grow. And God speaks to his people. You don't have to be a preacher for God to speak to you. God speaks to his people. One more scripture, and I'm closing. Look what it said here. Maybe two. All right? Look what it said here in 2 Peter 1 and 3. I love this. He says, according as his d divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life. See, God has given you the tools necessary to master this life and all that comes with it, working, paying bills, being a husband, father, whatever it is. And then he's given you the tools to master godliness. If we're still saying holiness is hard, this is hard life, I, I just can't do it, then we're undermining the authority of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost helps you overcome every impediment in this flesh. And there are many. He said he'd given us everything. How? Through the knowledge of him that hath called us. What did he call us to? And virtue. He called us to be virtuous people. Virtuous people. People who do the right thing. Hello? Hello? people who are not trying to climb and scratch and dig and hurt other people in the process. Hello? 
people who love Jesus so much that they believe his word. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to say this and I'm going to take my seat. I used to complain. Man, I'm always the last one to get this and that. Until I read that scripture that said, the first shall be last. Am I in your Bible? And the last shall be first. See, I believe God knows how to take care of me regardless of what people do. This is what I want to tell you today. And I'm going to take my seat. Don't take for granted this life that you have. Don't take for granted your salvation. And don't over-exaggerate this life that we have. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Look, whatever you're going through, Jesus is behind it all. He knows how to orchestrate a deliverance that's so profound that no man will ever be able to take credit for it. God will get the glory out of your life. God is life. And the life he gives is eternal life. And the eternal life that we have, I believe, it affects this temporal life in such a way that we become the most attractive people. I'm not talking about physically. I'm just talking about we become the most attractive people to be around. If you save and don't nobody want to be around you, that's a problem. I'm going to repeat that. If you are saved and people don't want to be around you, something is wrong. The life of God is not on display because something about God draws people in your direction. Anybody glad you got eternal life today? Let me ask you that one more time. Anybody glad you got eternal life today? Before I take my seat, I, I'm going to ask if there's anybody in here, and I know your pastor normally gives the altar call, but I want to ask if there's anybody in here who's courageous enough to say, Pastor, you know what, I've struggled with some things, and, and I really, I really want to do better going forward. Will you come? Will you come? Come on. Don't let don't let nobody. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. You can just find your place on the altar if you want. Come on. Come on. I'm sorry, Pastor, but I just felt that in my spirit. Do we have some oil? Do we have some oil? Come on, y'all preachers. Will you do me a favor? Come on, Pastor. We're going to lay, lay hands on the people today. I just feel this in my spirit. Come on, Brian. Come on, let's go to work. 